Bible. You live by the word of God. The word of God has a way of giving you compass to navigate your way. If you want the knowledge of God in your life, if you want to increase and grow and multiply the knowledge of God's word in your life, spend time in his word. level you will see in scriptures the language of sufficient grace grace that is sufficient for me grace that is sufficient for us one scripture comes to mind second corinthians chapter 3 from verse 5 to verse 6 paul wrote to the efficient i mean corinthian christians in that place the members of the corinthian church and he said we have no sufficiency of ourselves to be sufficient is to have enough Sufficiency is about being content. And he started to use the language, we have no sufficiency as of ourselves. Our, the supply we have, which is enough for situations, which is enough for this condition, which is enough for whatever we have to face on a daily basis, did not originate from us. Our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Our sufficiency is of God. So he started to recognize that there is a supply that goes beyond ourselves, goes beyond human pedigree, goes beyond parental supply, goes beyond financial supplies. He said, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as being from ourselves, originating from ourselves, but our sufficiency is what? From God. Next verse, please. He says, who also made us sufficient as ministers, effective ministers of the new covenant. So my interest there is the ability to minister as an evangelist, minister as a music minister, minister as an usher. He said there is a level of sufficiency that comes about it. That's what makes us representatives, able ministers of the new covenant or new minister. However, grace that operates in this level is just enough. You have grace for sufficiency. That means you have enough supplies to face whatever you have to face. Paul had a condition in his life. He had unusual revelation. Second Corinthians chapter 12 from verse 1. He said he came to abundance of visions and revelation. He referred to about 14 years before. He was writing this report to the Corinthian Christians. And then he said in verse 7. Because of the abundance of revelations. A messenger of Satan. Was sent to strike me. The King James uses the language to buffet. To beat, to strike me. He said, lest I be exalted above measure. And he said, for this condition in my body, I called on the Lord three times. Maybe you are in here this morning. You have a situation in your life for which you are calling on God. It could be a financial situation. It could be a moral situation. It could be an academic situation. Paul said, three times I call on the Lord to take this thing away from me. And when God responded, God did not respond sufficiently. God responded by giving grace. Using the language sufficient grace. Just enough to tackle this problem. Just enough to deal with this condition. Just enough to neutralize the effect of the working of Satan in his body. Some people believe, some schools of thought believe that it was a, an eye defect. Maybe glaucoma or whatever. 
Because you see in Galatians how he reported that you guys, you are willing, you knew my condition in my body, my health challenge, and some of you, you are even willing, if I demanded it, to give me your eyes. Have you read that before in Galatians? So some people believe that Paul had eye-related defects, but I'm not too sure. Neither can you dispute it. If you have the proof, let us know. <laughs> anyway, so you see sufficient. So he now said when he realized God responded to him, Jesus himself speaking to him, he said, my grace is sufficient. Meaning what I've given you is enough to handle this condition. What I've given you is su sufficient, is enough supply to handle this condition. So one level of grace is sufficiency, sufficient grace. However, there is another level of grace. And this level of grace, the scripture uses the language abounding grace or exceeding grace. And he started to make reference to how you can walk in the power of God in an exceeding dimension. Whatever exceeds means it surpasses. Whatever exceeds means it excels above every limitation. Above every boundary. He said exceeding grace. I'll be showing us some of those scriptures. It talks about abounding grace. Paul said in one place in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. He said that God is able to do exceedingly abundant. He now combines it actually in that place. Exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think according to what? According to what? That power is the supply of grace. That makes you have more than enough for your journey. That makes you have more than enough for your condition. That makes you have more than enough. You move from single solitary life into a married life. And as you move into marriage, all your in-laws, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your brothers-in-law, your sisters-in-law, they pack gallantly into your house. Because you are an answer to prayers. God give me a man who will carry all my burdens. Oh God. <laughs> and unless you operate on a higher level of grace, maybe in this case an overflow of grace, you may begin to have contentions you never bargained for. <laughs> Are you still in here or you are elsewhere? So the scriptures recognize there can be an overflow. English cause overflow super abundant to super abound a measure of grace that is more than enough and I want to challenge someone in here maybe you, have even, you, you don't even you are not operating in grace there is a level of grace that can be sufficient for you you can come to a level of grace that is just enough for that challenge you cannot carry it over into another challenge but you see there is a higher level to operate in when no matter the challenge, the ones you are aware of and the ones that have been packed from hell against you, you have more than enough supply in your system, in your tank. No matter where they are coming from. The Bible says the gift is a precious stone in the hands of him who has it. Proverbs chapter 17 from verse 8. That grace you receive is a measure of the gift of God. It says the gift is a precious stone in the hands of him who has it. Wherever it turns, you turn towards marriage, you prosper there. You turn towards business, you prosper there. You turn towards Christian service, you prosper there. You turn towards entrepreneurship, you prosper there. You turn towards raising children, your own children and your neighbor's children, and you prosper there. May you receive grace this morning. It seems you're not hungry enough. May you receive grace this morning. When you begin to walk in a hostile environment, and the same people you have put your back upon to lean upon, they begin to set you up, they begin to give words of slander behind you. You put your back on them to lean on them, they put dagger behind your back. I want you to know, at certain levels of life, you need to arm yourself with an overflow. You need to arm yourself with an exceeding level. You need to arm yourself with the abundance of the grace of God. Opening your Bibles as we get on here this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. I want to recommend this book. 
it's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Explain His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you. Grace Explain His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. And chapter 9. I read from verse 6 to verse 8, and then also I read from verse 14 to verse 15. And it reads, But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. God does not have a problem with your, your, your measure for sowing into the things of God, in the house of God. But he's simply saying the measure with which you measure out is the same measuring instrument with which it, it will be measured back to you. He who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully, overflow, exceedingly, bountifully, will also reap bountifully. He said, so let each one give as he has proposed. So the question is, do you want abundant inflow and you are releasing a sparing outflow? Let everyone, uh, let everyone choose as he has proposed in his heart. God cannot be more. You cannot be expecting an overflow from God and your attitude, your disposition towards him is sparing, sparing service, sparing time. You don't really care for the things of God. You just want to run your own show. You are willing to be hardworking on your job because they pay you a good salary because you are highly recommended in the organization. But you are not willing to raise a little finger in the things of God. Not even to represent God in your organization. He who sows sparingly shall reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he, has, as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God, the consequence of this is, and God is able to make all grace. I love this. All expressions of grace. I will bring us to another level of grace in a moment. But he says, God is able to make all grace. Somebody say all grace. all grace. Friends, maybe what you are looking at in your life is one dimensional. But what God is bringing to you is multidimensional. That one dimension will not be enough to handle the many-sided operations of God. That's why he says here, and God is able to make all grace abound overflow excel exceed barricades and boundaries towards you always having all sufficiency one level in all things may have an abundance another level from the same grace may have an abundance for every good work and by their prayer for you verse 15 14 we long for you because of the exceeding grace of God in you Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. One thing I also capture from this passage, as we establish the, a higher level of grace here, one thing I also capture from this passage is how that even in some things we handle carnally, 
we handle cheaply, we belittle, like in this passage, the issue of giving can even determine the level of grace you connect to. The level of your giving, your heart in giving. So God recommends a cheerful giver. God puts side by side a sparing giver who will also receive sparing returns. A generous giver who can only stand to receive bountiful returns. But you see here, I wrote in my notes, I said here, this also shows us that by the gift of giving, we can connect with the abundant or exceeding grace of God. May you connect with the overflow. May you not pray that the level of not enough. May you go beyond the level of just enough. May you come into an overflow. May what you carry be more than enough to handle whatever may come your way. Arranged for you by God. Packaged against you by hell. May you have an overflow. And yet another level of grace here. The Bible calls this one manifold grace. Not just grace on a higher level, but grace on several levels. Manifold means many sided. The Bible tells me in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 10, how that unto principalities and powers in heavenly places, God is able to make known his manifold, many sided wisdom through the church. But let's get to First Peter here. First Peter in chapter 4. Hello friends. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you. Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Peter and chapter 4. I read from verse 10. As each one has received a gift, gift of giving, gift of praying, gift of leading, gift of prophecy, you see it in that passage. As everyone has received a gift, minister each to one another as good stewards of what? many sided so when we talk about manifold grace yet another level of the operation of grace when we talk about manifold grace this is when grace can operate on a multi-dimensional level by by this grace a person can function on several fronts let me use a man as an example. He can function as a man who is a Christian. He can function as a husband who is a Christian. He can function as a parent who is a father who is a Christian. He can function as a son who is a Christian. He can function as a sibling who is a Christian. He can function as a leader who is a Christian. He can function in the marketplace. Multidimensional. Because to serve God and represent God in all those areas, you need the grace of God. And when at random, simultaneously, all those areas of your life, demands are placed on them, you'll be able to function and be effective 
and flourish. Why? Because you are a steward of the manifold grace of God. The scriptures also tell us, but I'll not dig deeper into that today. It tells us how the grace we receive. Going back to our opening scripture from John chapter 1 from verse 14. He said, and he, the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld his glory. Even as the, of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. In verse 16. Verse 16 now. He says, and of that fullness in Jesus. That fullness of grace have we all received. And grace for grace. When you study other um, translations, it's talking about grace added to grace. Grace that can take you to new levels. Grace that will upgrade your life. Grace that will, uh, grace that will upgrade your operating system. Grace that will upgrade your productivity level. May you receive grace this morning. In your work with God, may you receive grace this morning. In the several fronts of responsibility, may you receive grace this morning. May the grace of God be sufficient for you. May you receive abounding grace. May you receive an overflow of grace. May the grace of God be multifunctional, multidimensional in your life. In the name of Jesus. When you operate in the multidimensional level of grace, you will not be frustrated. You will not be flustered. You will not give up under pressure. You rise to the task. You rise to the challenge. No matter what may come, no matter what hell has packed, Jesus said, let's get over to the other side. He got into the boat with his disciples, put his head on a pillow and slept off. As an embodiment of grace. The enemy rose, stirred up the wind, stirred up the waters, stirred up the wind, stirred up the waters. And the disciples were afraid and they went to meet him thinking of death. But a carrier of grace could only think of solutions and overcoming the challenge. Because there was not just sufficient for him, there was an overflow for all of them. He didn't rebuke them to start with. He rebuked the condition the enemy had raised in the place. He spoke to the waters. He spoke to the wind. He said, be, peace, be still. He used the language in the gospel of Matthew. He said, rebu to rebuke is to put in order. You are in disobedience. You are in violation. I made you. I made the wind. I made the waters. What is the enemy using these elements against their source and maker? So he rebuked the wind. He rebuked the waters. And there was calmness in the place. That was when he now scolded the people who had been receiving measures of grace. Why did you doubt? Because the moment doubt checks in, faith checks out. Grace is locked up. So you see how Jesus operated in grace. And I challenge you here this morning as I tidy this. It's important that you handle life with the supply of grace in your life. Not just little grace, minimum level sufficient grace, but you only be sufficient for the task you are, you are consciously confronted with. It will only be sufficient for what you are consciously aware of. How about the ones that are put together against you of which you are not aware? You need an overflow. So that while you are facing some head, headlong and some are packed to come against you on the backside, anywhere they press, there is an overflow. When you press the orange, whether from the top or the side or the base, what it carries overflows. May you overflow with grace. Ah, you didn't get this morning. No matter the challenge, no matter what you are faced with, may you receive grace. May you overflow with grace. May you overflow with grace. In the name of Jesus. Having said that, I need to close. I think I put together this morning more than is needed for this morning. But let me jump some parts of my notes and tidy this. You can, you can increase your capacity. You want to move from no grace into grace, into sufficient grace, into moving from grace to grace into overflow of grace, into manifold grace, you can increase your capacity. You see, this human body, there's one channel my wife watches a lot. It has to do with all these obese people. And I keep asking, even yesterday I asked her, why do you like watching this channel? Uh, let me keep the answer to ourselves. 
And I got home yesterday evening and I saw this one. The 3,000 pound family. 3,000 pounds, three or four members of the family, is m about 1,400 kilos. Just three or four human beings. All of us in front here, we are the weight of one human being. In fact, one of them, when I got home, stepped on the scale, and the scale said, please, step down. Please, step down. <laughs> And the lady trying to attend to him said, to us viewing, he said, for the scale to make that remark, that means the man exceeds 550 kilos. You see the human body and they show the man when he was younger, lean frame, but he had a problem with eating until he became in that condition. The human body is like rubber. When, you take, when we were growing up, we had rubber, we had elastic. You stretch it it goes back to its normal length. Then you stretch it beyond its threshold, it goes back, but not to the normal length. So it begins to see sagging effects. Likewise, but with added benefits, our spirit man, it's a container. You can stretch it. You can pull it. I use the language when we had some elements in January. You can dredge your capacity. Friends, I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Explains His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you. Grace Explains His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Praise God. What a time in God's word today. I'm sure you've been blessed. Your heart has been ignited as you listen to that broadcast today. But I'd like to challenge you beyond being a, ca a casual listener, a passive Christian, I want you to become a passionate follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, think on these words you've heard today, and take them to heart, search the scriptures if these things are so, and live by them, and live for Jesus. God is looking for vehicles. God is looking for vessels. He can fill him with himself, and demonstrate himself, and release his glory upon the earth today. But will he find you? If God can find you and use you, he will use you to do some things on the face of the earth. He will first of all transform you and then use you to transform a generation, transform the society. I want to challenge you, dear friend and brother and sister. Let us live by these words. Let us raise a new generation for our Lord on the face of the earth and the Lord will be pleased thereby. Until another broadcast, remember Jesus, the son of the living God, is coming back again. May we see him. May we follow him. May we worship and serve him. God bless you. Amen.